Alright, how's it going guys? Got another video for you and this one is on the uh, WL Toys 12-428 and the front suspension that goes on it. Um, so how this thing originally comes, it's got two solid links right there and right there. And those connect to pivot points which connect to the shocks which are actually under this hood area right here. Um, what's wrong with that is uh, that pivot and the whole system just possibly collects dust, I don't know, but it creates a lot of friction and it stops working after just a few runs, it starts working terribly. It slumps and it doesn't rebound all the way. So notice how this rebounds all the way. If I were to do that with the original suspension, when I pushed it down, it would come back, but it would just come back to right about there. So you'd only have this much suspension travel as opposed to the full suspension travel that it's supposed to have. Um, when I noticed that it wasn't rebounding all the way, um, I went online, saw a few videos, and saw that people were making their own uh, custom, um, custom shock towers or brackets. Like, I created my own bracket at first, um, not what I have installed now. I don't, wanna, uh, don't feel like explaining it right now because it's, you know, kind of complicated. But what some people did were they were just screwing the top of the shock towers directly into these holes right here on the front of the differential. And uh, they used washers to hold it in, something like that. But yeah, I created my own bracket. Wasn't the prettiest looking thing. But then when I did a little more research, I found this thread on a forum of some guy that ended up using one of these guys. Um, what I have in here is plastic. This is the aluminum version. I haven't installed it yet, but essentially it's the same thing. And as you can see, uh, this is the shock tower to a WL Toys A959. That's the model number of the car that it comes off of. Um, and that car has front and rear shock towers and the front and rear shock towers are identical. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, often sold in pairs but as you can see this is the front differential to this car the uh 12428 and you can take that a959 shock tower and put it on top of the front differential and as you can see those holes on the bottom of that shock tower line up pretty well with the holes of the uh front differential plate so those two screws hold in that plate along with those two screws on the bottom and those top screws line up pretty well with the holes in the shock tower, as you can see. Now, I did a little adjustment on this exact uh, shock tower, as you can see on the bottom. I've done quite a bit of filing. Uh, on the front, it hasn't really been filed. On the back, it has. So what I did was I filed it down at an angle like so and just knocked off that back corner of the shock tower as you can see because where it sits on the differential you can see right here it's not flat it's at an angle so what you want to do is you kind of want to match that angle and before when that corner was there this thing would be sitting a little bit higher to the point where those uh, screw holes wouldn't quite line up so when you knock off that back corner it drops down just enough to the point where those holes line up pretty much perfectly Another thing I had to do was the insides <clears throat> were not quite fitting around the top of the differential. Like, I, it wouldn't pop on. So I actually had to take the insides and file them down a little bit as well, like so. And after that, that opened it up to the point where it would drop right onto the front of the differential. So, there's that. Um, let's pop open the car and we'll see what it looks like actually on the car and uh, see the plastic one that I have underneath right now. Alright, so now that we got the hood off, you guys can see everything. And as you can see right here and right here, there are two gold screws and that's what's holding in the uh, bracket with a couple links right here and right here that hold it stabilized in place. So, one thing I need to mention is those two screws... Um, they're not quite long enough, the original ones, so you're gonna have to find replacements. What you wanna do is you wanna take those out, you wanna identify what kind of screw they are before you replace them. Um, on mine, they were 2.6 self-tapping screw, look a little bit like that. 
uh, threads are a little bit wider, but some of them, like even on this differential, I took out the screws and it actually has a 2.5 M 2.5 machine screw. So you're going to kind of want to figure out what's in there before you find the replacement screws, but you're going to want to get a screw that's twice as long. So this is M 2.6 self tapping screw and that's eight millimeters long. So I would use something like this M 2.6 self tapping that's 16 millimeters long. But uh, self-tapping screws are kind of hard to find. So if you have machine screws in there, it's gonna make it a lot easier. At first, I couldn't find those longer self-tapping screws. So what I ended up using was this. It's a number three by 33 and a, or, sorry, number three by three quarter inch wood screws. So yeah, it says right there, wood screws. And this is what it looks like. It's not even threaded all the way through. So I got a section where it's not threaded, but that's what I put in here and here because I couldn't find the self tapping screws at the time. And that was the closest thing I could find to it. And it just happened to work. Uh, another thing I want to mention um, when it comes to those screws is they don't quite fit in the bottom holes of the aluminum shock tower. So if you're going to get the aluminum, you're actually going to have to drill that out just a little bit so those screws will fit. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, speaking of screws, uh, what I did up here is I actually took a screw and I created a threaded rod out of it. How I did that is I took an M3 by 50 screw and I cut off the top with a Dremel tool and then kind of sanded it up, cleaned it up, but that created a threaded rod, which I could put into these rod ends. How I created these rod ends, let me show you, is I actually took those original front links that used to be here and here, and I cut them in half. And then I drilled them out so that I could screw the rod into the sides. And what I did was I first started a pilot hole by drilling in uh, with a 1 16th inch bit just to try to get it centered. Then I widened it with a 5 64th, a 3 30 seconds, and then a 7 64th inch drill bit. And after that, it got wide enough just to the point where I could get that threaded rod in. And as you can see, you just want to make it just long enough so that it will kind of attach to these holes right here on the uh, shock tower. And then you want to reach these exist pre-existing holes on this plate right here that the uh, original shocks used to screw into. Just to show you guys the measurements. The gap is, let's change that to millimeters. The gap is just about 26 millimeter, 26 and a half, which means the rod, the threaded rod is gonna be just about 40 millimeters or so. Yeah, and from hole to hole, center of hole to center of hole, just about 67 millimeters. So those are your dimensions there. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the close-up of the rod. And as you can see on the back here, you just put an M2.5 screw, and that goes into the pre-existing hole where the old shock used to go into. And then you just need to make the rod the right length. And then this side will go into the pre-existing hole on the shock tower. And what I did was I left the ball joint in here, just like in this one, as you can see the ball joint. But what happens is when you take this screw, that actually pushes the ball joint through and it kind of drops into here and it actually stabilizes it so it's super tight worked out perfectly didn't mean for that to happen but it's just one of those happy coincidences and this should be an m2.5 screw as well i believe a uh, machine screw obviously and as you can see on the bottom there's just a nut holding it in place and as you can see this m2.5 screw has a built-in washer and I just happened to have those because I took them off of the rear shock tower, which used to have the same thing, um, or those are 
straight off of the rear shock tower. So those, those used to be right here, but I had to take them off because I needed longer screws for the rear shocks because I now have spacers because I have different shocks on there. So I had those extra screws lying around, but if you need to just use a regular M2.5 screw and just put on a couple of washers like I did on here. And that'll widen it to the point where the screw won't just fall through the rod end. But yeah. And that just about does it for the custom front suspension on the 12428. Um, you guys can go ahead and check the description below for any links to anything like the shock tower, the aluminum one, the plastic one. I may link a couple other things. Um, I'll also link a video to a speed run that I, the speed runs that I did with this car. And this may quite possibly be the fastest 12428 on YouTube right now. So, uh, go ahead and check that out. Otherwise, if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and post down below. I'll do my best to answer all the questions and respond to any comments that need to be responded to. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.